Hi friends, hello, welcome to this special episode on the youth parliament. National Youth Parliament Competition is conducted by Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs, Government of India in association with Kendri Vidyalaya Sangata. The 33rd National Youth Parliament Competition is in progress. In connection with that, the regional level competition was conducted at Kendri Vidyalaya Naval Base, Ernapu. Youth Parliament is conducted to create an awareness among the students about the parliamentary procedures, how a question is asked, how the ministers are giving answers to the questions, what are the list of items in a session, how a law is made, etc. The regional level competition was conducted at Kendri Vidyalaya Naval Base, Kochi. The team of judges were headed by Professor K.V. Thomas, former Union Minister for Food and Civil Service. We are very happy to see that Kendri Vidyalaya Kanjiko was selected for the first runner-up trophy. The Vidyalaya was represented by a team of 55 students trained by six teachers and the session is like this. Honourable members, a very good morning to all of you and I welcome you all to the 33rd Regional Youth Parliament Session and I hope this session will be fruitful. We begin today's session with the oath of formation of our newly elected members. Secretary General, please. Srimadi Nandita Dikshit, who stands elected from the Varanasi constituency of Uttar Pradesh, will now take the oath or affirmation. Madam, do you want to take the oath or affirmation? Oath, please. In which language would you like to take the oath? In Sanskrit, please. Aham. Aham. Nandita Dikshit, Loga Sabhaya Ha Sadasya Tuena Nirvachita, Nishena Parameshara Siyanam Nashape, Yadaham, Vidhina Stapitam Bharata Siyasam Vidhanam Prati, Satyam, Shraddham, Nishtam, Chadharishye. Yadaham, Bharatasya Sampurnam Prabhutvam, Sampanatam, Akhantatam, Charakshishyami. Tatha, Yadpadam Grihitum Mahamudyatosmi, Tasya Kartavyani, Shraddha Purvakam Nirvakshyami. Welcome, Nandita. Honourable members, as we meet today, it is my sad duty to inform the House the demise of our former colleague, Sri Vikas Raj. Sri Vikas Raj was an agriculturist by profession and an active social worker. He worked in the rural areas, devoting his time and energy for the welfare of agricultural labourers and the uplife of the backward classes and the downtrodden. He was the president of Masdur Sabha, Mirzapur. An able parliamentarian and an effective orator, he took keen interest in the proceedings of the House. He passed away at New Delhi on 30th July 2022 
at the age of 45. Sir, I rise to pay my tributes to Sri Vikas Raj, whose death is being deeply mourned by all. He was a young man who had a bright future ahead of him. His death is a true loss to our country. He was with us to the very last moment. He seemed well and happy. Hence, the shock of his death is all the more greater. I stand here with a soul full of gratitude and a heart in pain. Sir, I would like to extend my deepest condolences on behalf of my government and myself to the family. Sir, I associate myself with the tributes paid by you and the leaders of the house. Sri Vikas Raj was a person who, because of his lovable nature, never annoyed anyone and was a person with a smiling face. Wo ati shant, saumya aur spasht vadi vekti thi. Main aur mere paksh ke sadasya, mahan saboot Shri Vikas Raj ki is akasmaat mrityu par gaira shok vyakt karte huye ne shraddhaan se li arpit karte hu. Now, the house may stand in silence for a while to express our deep sorrow. Secretary General may convey the message of condolences to the bereaved family. Yes, sir. Prime Minister to introduce new ministers. Sir, it is my pleasure to introduce to you and through you to the house, my colleagues, the new ministers. Sri Ratan Varma, Minister of State of Communication. Srimati Neha Datta, Minister of Irrigation. Now, let us begin with the question now. Question number 101, Ms. Amrita Thakur. Speaker, sir, question number 101. Will the Minister of Education be pleased to state while the center's efforts in evacuating stranded Indians from Ukraine should be applauded? It is a matter of grave concern that more than 20,000, more than 20,000 of the evacuees were students pursuing medical education in their country. What are the measures taken by the government to secure the future and life of these students? Honorable Minister for Education, please. Honorable Speaker, sir, there is no such provision in Indian Medical Council Act 1956 and National Medical Commission Act 2019 to accommodate these students. Honorable Speaker, sir, how can the government be unfair to these students in such a situation by just quoting some rules? Isn't it high time to reconsider these rules? Member, please be seated. Minister, you may continue. Sir, as of now, all these students are attending online classes in various theory subjects. Videshi Chikil Sasnathak License Niyam, Dosari Kis, Keta Hai, Pura Patikram, Prashit Shad, or Internship, Bharat Ke Bahar Adhyan Ke Dauran, AK Videshi Chikil Sasnathan, make Kia Jayega. Or, Chikilsa Prashitshan or Internship ka koi bhi hissa, koi bhi hissa bharat mein nahi kiya jayega. Supplementary question, Mr. Adhwaid Reddy. 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 Ad और किसी भी परिस्थिति में वे भारत में चिकित्सा का अभ्यास नहीं कर पाएंगे। And I am sure that none of us would be entertained by the prospect of being treated by a doctor who has not taken any practical classes. Mr. Adwait, this is the question now. Please come to your point. Yes, sir. वे सब ये मांग कर रहे हैं कि उन्हें ऑफलाइन कक्षाओं और इंटर्नशिप में भाग लेने का अवसर दिया जाए। इस पर सरकार की क्या प्रतिक्रिया है? Honourable Minister, please. Respected Speaker Sir, the National Medical Commission provisions on online classes is as follows. Foreign graduates are allowed to undergo online classes in theory subjects only, supplemented by official practical and clinical.
medical training done at the medical university and its affiliated hospitals during the course of MBBS. Yeah. They are also required to earn a certificate of successful completion for the same. Speaker Mahode, we are our children. देश का एक अभिन्न अंग है और देश इनकी शिक्षा और करियर की जिम्मेदारी से इनकार नहीं कर सकता उनके लिए ऑनलाइन कक्षाएं विशेष व्यावहारिक सत्र शाम की कक्षाएं जब भी और जहां भी संभव हो आयोजित की जाएगी However considering the unprecedented nature of the situation High level talks are going on with the Ukrainian government and discussions have already started with the neighboring countries of Ukraine which are neutral in this war so as to accommodate the Indian students to complete their course in an effective way. Sir, yes. so, concerns related to this issue shall be settled amicably and I am sure that there won't be any issues related to their career, degree or future. Yes. Or, my member, इतना तो हम दावा कर सकते हैं कि जब तक हमारे सरकार यहाँ है, आपको इसे सिर्फ ऑनलाइन कक्षाएं लेने वाले डॉक्टरों के पास जाना नहीं पड़ेगा। No more supplementary questions, please. Next question, question number one or two, Ms. Srinidhi Sharma. Honourable Speaker, question number one or two. My question to the Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas. The price hike in the petroleum products within a short period of time is affecting the common people. What are the steps taken by the government in this regard? Honorable Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, please. Honorable Speaker, sir, the price of fuel in India is directly related to the price of crude oil in the international market. 80% of our fuel is imported, which means that a global rise in the price directly translates to a similar price hike here. In 2020-21, the price of crude oil crashed in Saudi Arabia, the major producer, and they damped their production by 10 lakh barrels per day in an effort to cut their losses and bring the prices up. This resulted in a price stability back then. Now, however, the war in Ukraine has led to a disruption in the global supply chain resulting in a global price hike and a corresponding price hike here. However, that certainly does not mean that government is not doing anything. Yes. We have cut the excise duties on petrol and diesel to rupees 8 and to rupees 6 per litre respectively as part of our efforts to minimize the burden of price hike on the common man. In fact, I think that I can allow myself to say that we have handled this situation pretty well. Of course, cooperation from the states is also needed to further bring down the prices of crude oil. Supplementary question, Ms. Nakshatra. Honorable Speaker, sir, I'd like to know whether the government has taken any steps regarding the switching of petroleum from the non-GST list to the GST list? If so, what would be its effect on the gross national income? Sir, may I please answer to this question? Yes, Honorable Minister for Finance, please. Sir, while I cannot deny the beneficial effect of bringing fuel under the GST ambush, I would like to point out that it would also result in a very significant loss of revenue of rupees 2 lakh crore from the treasury of both the center and state. A burden that would inevitably pass on to the common people. As such, now we have no plan to bring petrol and diesel under the ambit of GST, at least for the present. No more supplementary questions, please. Next question, question number 103, Ms. Catherine George. Speaker, sir, question number 103. Will the Minister of External Affairs be pleased to state whether the government has planned or taken any measures to identify the unregistered individuals in the neighboring countries? If so, what are the details? Honorable Minister for External Affairs, please. Speaker, sir, the powers to identify and deport foreign nationals staying illegally in our country have been delegated to the state government and union territory administrations. All states are therefore advised to sensitize all the law enforcement agencies 
for taking prompt steps in identifying these illegal immigrants without any delay. The government is aware that it is essential to identify these illegal immigrants and keep an eye on their activities. We know, we know that the detection and deportation of such illegal immigrants from Rakhine State is a continuous process. Supplementary question, Ms. Sitara. Speaker, sir, whether the government is planning to offer citizenship to refugees who have migrated to India, if so, the details thereof. Honorable Minister, please. Speaker, sir, as per our existing foreign policy, we are not going to offer citizenship to these refugees after considering various social Mahode, issues. Mahode, Mahode, if it's like that, then why are you not going to stop for them? Why are you not going to stop for them? Member, please be seated. Minister, you may continue. Thank you, sir. The refugees, with their invalid credentials, engage in domestic violence and later become untrackable. Due to this, a sense of fear has been awakened among the public, resulting in various other law and order issues. Our government is already extending financial aid and moral support to that country. Speaker, sir, we Indians are known for our benevolence and charity. But in this case, after considering our present population density, it is impossible to accommodate these refugees. No more supplementary questions, please. Next question, question number 104, Ms. Gayatri Sumit. Honorable Speaker, sir, question number 104. Will the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change be pleased to state whether Honorable Supreme Court ruling regarding the one kilometer eco sensitive zone around National Park has been implemented. Have the repercussions it might have on the area been considered? If, if so, the details thereof. Honorable Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, please. Honorable Speaker, sir, these ecologically sensitive zones are created to reduce the impact on climate change. Moreover, it is a part of NDC, Nationally Determined Contribution, which is in turn a part of the Paris Agreement, in which one of our aims is to increase the tree and forest cover area by 2030. I assure that there will be no forceful eviction of the inhabitants living in these areas. I would like to bring to the notice of the House that the Honorable Supreme Court has directed that the minimum width of the ecologically sensitive zones may be diluted in overwhelming public interest. But for that purpose, the state or union territory shall approach the Central Empowered Committee and my ministry and both these bodies shall give their respective opinions or recommendations to the court. On that basis, the court shall pass appropriate order. Supplementary question, Mr. Adityan Raj. Sir, we would like to know what alternations the government plans to make in the implementation of the various projects pertaining to these areas in the wake of popular demands made by these residents. Honorable Minister, please. Sir, currently the case is under the consideration of the Honorable Supreme Court. The government will make a decision on this issue in accordance with the Honorable Supreme Court verdict. Supplementary question, Mr. Namneet Tushar. Adhiksh Mahodai, kya sarkar ne pashmi ghaaton ke sambandh mein Dr. Kasturi Rangan report ko lagu karne ke liye koi kadham uthaye hai? Yadi haan, to uska vivrant kya hai? Yadi nahi, to is vilam ka kya karan hai? Honorable Minister, please. Sir Speaker, in order to follow a coherent and consistent approach in notifying the ecologically sensitive areas of Western Ghats, this ministry has been interacting with all the states of the Western Ghats regions at various levels. Efforts are being made to finalize the notification taking into consideration the environmental concerns of the region and the suggestions or recommendations of the state governments concerned, keeping in view the conservation aspects and the developmental aspirations of the region. No more supplementary questions, please. Question number 105, Ms. Ananya Saju. Honorable Speaker, ma'am. Question number 105, 
Will the Minister of Women and Child Development be pleased to say what actions are taken by the government regarding the recent POXO cases that occurred in the country? We all know that Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act came into existence in the year 2012. Madam, this is the question hour, so do come to your point. Yes, ma'am. Even after 10 years of its implementation, the number of cases are alarmingly increasing. The women too face such atrocities in their workplaces. What is the use of such laws which does not safeguard the safety and security of women and children? Honorable Minister for Women and Child Development, please. Honorable Speaker, ma'am. As per the data regarding the child abuse cases under the POXO Act, the total number of cases registered in the year 2019 were 47,324. Whereas in 2021, the number of cases registered were 40,308. Therefore, it can be clearly seen that there is no increase in the number of cases registered under the POXO Act. Madam, the opposition is deliberately manipulating the data to tarnish the image of the government. Honourable members, please remain silent. The minister may continue. Thank you, ma'am. Further, the Department of Ministry is also implementing a national scheme for the setting up of more than 1,000. I repeat, ma'am, more than 1,000 fast-track special codes for providing speedy justice to the victims of POXO Act. Moreover, considering the paramount importance of the safety and security of women and children, the Cabinet has also decided to continue the scheme for two more financial years up to 31st March 2023 with a budgetary outlay of more than 1,000 crore rupees. Supplementary question, Mr. Arjit Raghavan. Mananiya Speaker Mahodaya, Kya Sarkar Sambandit Agency or Adalaton Ke Beach Behatar Sayok Sunishit Karne Ke Lee Koi Kadam Utha Rahi Hai? Pokso Mamlon Ke Torit or Behatar Niptan Ke Lee Kya Vishesh Abhiyojakon Ko Prashikshan Diye Hai? Yedi Haan, Toh Tat Samandhi Biora Kya Hai? Or Yedi Nahi, Toh Iska Kya Karan Hai? Honorable Minister, please. Speaker, Madam, as per the information received, the NCPCR has taken many initiatives. Please let me complete. Poxo tracking portal ka shubharam, Satra July 2022 ko kiya gaya. Tracking portal ki parikalpana, Rashriya Kanuni Seva Pradikaran or NCPCR ke samyut sahyog se ki gai hai. The committee also organized various meetings at different regions of the country with an objective to build a comprehensive understanding on the implementation of the POXO Act. Now the question now is over. Madam, 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 Madam. Yes, Ms. Ananya. Madam, I would like to raise a serious issue regarding the safety of our country. A foreign ship from our neighboring country visited the Hamid Tota port of Sri Lanka and this visit was a threat to India's security. Many nations have cautioned us regarding this visit. The well-equipped ship will be there in the Indian Ocean for a few more months. It's believed that the ship's aim is to collect various security data. No doubt, the visit of the ship has escalated tension in the Indian Peninsula. World security experts have also looked at this matter with great concern. Ma'am, the common people of our country have panicked after seeing the news about the ship and we feel insecure. Ma'am, I want to know what action was taken by the government to monitor the activities of the ship. Ma'am. I seriously doubt whether the government has approached this breach of security with the gravity that it deserves. I would like the government to tell us frankly, does India have a reason to be worried? Madam, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Nanya. Honorable Speaker, 
I would like to draw the attention of the house towards the Agnipat scheme. Why is the government so reluctant to have an open debate on this matter? How does the government plan to ensure social and financial securities when the recruits have already completed their tenure? Even an elected government has five years tenure, ma'am. What about the effectiveness of their training? We are worried this scheme may reduce the operational effectiveness of the armed forces. Madam Speaker, the government is aware of the situation. We are collecting the information of the issue and the minister's concern will answer the question in the next meeting. Honourable members, several MPs have given breach of privilege notice against the editor of News Daily, Juala. Sriman Arjun Rao can bring this to the notice of the House. The member may speak. Honourable Speaker, Madam, the editor of the newspaper, Juala, has used derogatory and defamatory language against the members of the parliament, attributing motives to a decision taken in the parliament. This is against the parliamentary privileges, the rights and immunities enjoyed by the parliament as an institution and MPs in their individual capacity without which we cannot discharge our functions as entrusted upon us by the constitution. The House does hold the editor guilty of breach of privilege. However, instead of recommending punishment, the House saves its own dignity by not giving undue burdens to such irresponsible articles. They are published for cheap publicity and thus deserve no further discussions. Honourable Members, I have an announcement to make. On my own behalf of the Honourable Members of the House, I have a great pleasure in extending our warm welcome to His Excellency, Mr. Hiroyuki Hoshada, Speaker of the Japanese Parliament, and other honorable members of the Japanese Parliamentary Delegation who are on a visit to India as our honored guests. The other honorable members are Mrs. Takaka Odoi, Deputy Speaker, Mr. Harat Hirotaka Akamatsu, also Deputy Speaker. It is a very high power delegation. The delegation arrived on Monday, 29th August, 2022. They are now seated in the special box. We wish them a happy and fruitful stay in our country. And we also convey our warm greetings and very best wishes through them to the Emperor, the Prime Minister, the Parliament, the government and the gem and the friendly people of Japan. Secretary General, to report the message from the upper chamber of the youth parliament. Sir, I have to report the following message received from the secretary of the upper chamber of the youth parliament. Is that the bill of... Is that the bill of... Rec uh, is that the Bill of Regulation of Sports Bodies 2022, which was passed by the Upper Chamber of the Youth Parliament. Secretary General, to lay on the table a copy of the Bill as passed by the Upper Chamber of the Youth Parliament. Sir, I lay on the table of the House the Bill of Regulation of Sports Bodies 2022 as passed by the Upper Chamber. Secretary General, to lay the papers on the table. Sir? Yes, sir. Honorable Minister of Water Resources, to lay the papers on the table. Sir Speaker, may I be permitted to lay on the table a copy of the following papers, Hindi and English version of the Ministry of Water Resources? Yes, please. Annual report of the National Water Development Agency, New Delhi, for the year 2021-22 and the National Committee on Dam Safety Rules 2022 published a notification number GSR 134 in Gazette of India dated 17th February 2022. Now, let us take up the calling attention motion. 
I request Ms. Vishnupriya, Ms. Sanuja and Ms. Gayatri to call the attention of the Minister of Health and Family Welfare. Ms. Vishnupriya, please. Sir, I call the attention of the Minister of Health and Family Welfare to the following matter of urgent public importance and request that the Minister may make a statement thereon the situation arising out of food adulteration in the country and the steps taken by the government in this regard. Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare, please. Sir Speaker, the government is fully conscious of the injurious effect caused by the consumption of adulterated food by the consumers. The Food Safety and Standards Act 2006 consolidated the laws related to food and established the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, the FSSAI, for laying down science-based standards for articles of food and to regulate their manufacture, sale and import, distribution, storage, and to ensure the availability of safe and wholesome food for human consumption. As per the Act, penalties or punishments shall be given to those who sell food, not of nature or substance or quality demanded, substandard food, expired food items, food containing extraneous matter and unsafe food for possessing adulterants. To keep food adulteration in check, regular surveillance, monitoring and sampling of food products is being undertaken by the government. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, to check the quality of food items like milk, grain, dairy products, fruits, vegetables, etc. An online platform had been developed by the FSSAI by the name of DART. The Food Safety and Standards Regulation 2011 prescribes limits for pesticide residues, naturally occurring toxic substances and metal contaminants. The government had also revised the punishment set aside for milk adulteration, which is now life imprisonment and a fine of Rs. 10 lakh. As per the Food Safety Act 2019, deception in the cases of labelling, Packaging and misleading advertisement is a serious offence and strict action shall be taken in these cases. Yes. Yes. Ms. Vishnupriya, please. Sir, I would like to begin with the quote of Swami Vivekananda, which says, Brave, bold men and women, these are what we want. What we want is vigor in the blood, strength in the nerves, iron muscles and nerves of steel. Avoid all these, avoid all misery. Unquote. These qualities envisaged by him to construct a strong nation will be a far-fetched idea if we do not curb to menace food adulteration. If we leave food adulteration unchecked, we are bound to lose lives more than any war. The adulterated items include oil, milk and even water. It is ironic that a flourishing country like ours finds tourists carrying bottled water when they visit us. It has been stated that the milk obtained from hormone injected cows induces risk to a variety of cancers when consumed by humans. Sir, it is equally harmful for both human and cattle alike and it is sad to note that this trend is being seen all around the country. Another major threat in the country is resistance to antibiotics. The presence of antibiotics residues in honey, meat, poultry and egg products consumed can produce the resistance in the bacterial population in the human body and it makes infections for treatments fairly difficult. If this continues, sir, we will not have any frontline medicine. No frontline medicine to treat basic diseases like typhoid, like malaria and other common fevers. The latest one reported in the country, a new disease called IBS that is inflammatory bowel syndrome. Ms. Gayatri Yadav, please. Speaker, sir. Another order that I would like to bring to the notice of the House is the unregulated use of pesticides. Studies reveal that pesticides cause birth defects, nerve damage, and various cancer, mostly among the rural folks, as they remain unaware of these hazards. A recent study conducted by researchers in Rajasthan University has shown that there are high alarming levels of organochlorine pesticides in the blood and milk of lactating mothers. This is a matter of grave concern 
as mother's milk as a gift to us from God. I would like to cite an example of my native village, Periyadika. 20 years ago, there was only one cancer patient in my village. But now, in a population of 1,000, 50 people are suffering from cancer. 50 out of 1,000. Most of them are unable to afford a proper treatment. Because of this is the situation of my village. So you can imagine the situation of other villages that are not yet developed. This is now a national crisis with the number of cancer patients steeply increasing in our country. The highest number of cancer patients in India is detected from Kerala. I'm not exaggerating when I say that there is hardly any food that is left unadulterated. Statistics show that current laws are inadequate and the culprits are going scot-free with mega fines and small punishments. Adulteration is as good as poisoning the public and therefore strict laws should be there. Punishments given should be as severe as an attempt to murder cases and the adulterators should be booked under such provision. Ms. Sanuja Sharma. Other near Mahode. Chahe doot ho, chai ho, fal ho ya sabzi. Sab cheese me milavat ka bol bala hai. Badi buzur ke heke gai hai. Ahar should do hi satwa should do, satwa should do dur was with me. Agar ahar should hai, to hamari dej ki adi se zada rog sambati samasya to yuhi hal ho jai. Par aaj to dej ka ye hal hai. Yaha bi milavat, waha bi milavat. Yaha taki kane me bi milavat. Jai to kaha jai, kai to kya kai. Manivar har cheese me milavat hai. Follow ko jaldi pakani ke li calcium carbide ka istamal kiya jata hai. Mass machi ko taza rakni ke li formalin ka. Or mirch masalo me to sudanit milaya jata hai. Are is milavat ke zamani ni to zehar takko nahi choda. Aaj kal chuho ko chuhe marne wali dawai dawat jaise lagne lagi hai. दूध की तो बात ही करना बेकार है। 70 प्रतिशत दूध जो मार्केट में बेचे जा रहे हैं, वो हाल ही में मिलावटी साबित किए गए हैं। मुझे किसी की कई हुई बात याद आ रही है कि हमारे देश में शरीर से निकलने वाले पदार्थों की जांच करने के लिए गली-गली मोहल्ले में लैबोरेटरीज हैं। यहाँ तक कि घर-घर में जा� कि क्या आप अपने क्षेत्र में उपस्थित किसी चार ज़्यादा नहीं कह रही केवल चार फूड लैबोरेटरीज के नाम बिना कहीं देखे या बिना इंटरनेट के माध्यम से बता पाएंगे? Members please maintain the order of the house. आदरणीय महोदय मैं दावे के साथ कह सकती हूँ नहीं बता पाएंगे मैं भी नहीं बता पाऊँगी क्यों क्या कारण है इसका इसका यही कारण है कि अगर हमारे देश में कोई सक्षम फूड लैबोरेटरीज ही नहीं है, तो हम इस मिलावट पन जैसी बड़ी समस्या का हल कैसे निकाल पाएंगे? अब मैं बात करना चाहूँगी एक्सपोर्ट क्वालिटी के बारे में। हम सभी ने कभी ना कभी तो ये नाम सुना ही होगा। क्या है ये एक्सपोर्ट क्वालिटी? वो क्वालिटी जो दूसरे देशों � अगर हमारे देश की कंपनियां एक्सपोर्ट के नाम पर दूसरे देशों में बेचे जाने वाले खाद्य पदार्थों को बिना मिलावट के साथ बना सकते हैं, तो वही कंपनियां जब अपने देश की बात आती है, अपने लोगों पर बात आती है, तो खराब क्वालिटी के खाद्य पदार्थ क्यों बेचती हैं? इसका एक ही कारण संभव है, संभव नहीं। जनता का ये पूरा हक बनता है कि वो बिना मिलावट वाले खाद्य पदार्थों का सेवन करें और इस हक को लोगों तक पहुंचाने की पूरी की पूरी जिम्मेदारी सरकार की ही है। Yes, Miss Vishnu Priya. Sir, within the last three months, nine cases of death due to the consumption of adulterated food items have been reported in the country. अगर यही हाल होगा तो शासन करने के लिए प्रधानमंत्री जी सिर्फ आप ही होंगे प्रजा तो नहीं रहेगी। Honourable Prime Minister, please. Speaker Sir, food adulteration के खिलाफ हमने कार्रवाई की है। इसीलिए ये सिर्फ नौ मामले तक रुक गई है। अगर हमने उचित समय पर कार्रवाई न की होती, तो ये मामला और भी गंभीर हो सकता था। खाद्य सुरक्षा के लिए हमारे सरकार ने 
उचित समय पर एक उचित प्रभावी दल की आयोजना की है मान्य मेंबर आपने खाद्य की एक्सपोर्ट क्वालिटी के बारे में कुछ बात की थी वो सुनकर मुझे बड़ा दुख हुआ क्योंकि भारत मेरा परिवार है कोई अपने परिवार के साथ ऐसा व्यवहार करेगा यहां बात खाद्य पदार्थ की गुणवत्ता की नहीं आपकी सोच बदलने की आवश्यकता की है मान्यवर लगता है गणित में आप माहिर हो पर मुझे ये समझ नहीं आ रहा कि करोड़ों लोगों में से सिर्फ मैं ही जिंदा कैसे रहूंगी उतनी भी भाग्यशाली नहीं हूं मैं कम से कम आपने तो मेरी लंबी उम्र की आशा तो की उसकी मैं हमेशा आभारी रहूंगी ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर प्लीज स्पीकर सर अभी कॉलिंग अटेंशन मोशन में माननीय सदस्य द्वारा जो चिंता जाहिर की है उसका सही रूप में निवारण किया जाएगा उसके लिए हमारी सरकार कार्यक्षम भी है और कार्यरत भी है सबसे पहली बात तो यह है कि माननीय सदस्यों ने जिसे थ्रेट के रूप में कहा है वो सरकार ने चैलेंज के रूप में ली है एक बात हमें समझनी होगी कि जहां तक अडल्ट्रेशन या कंटामिनेशन को चेक करने का सवाल हो तो उसके नए नए तरीके और नए ढंग समाज में लोग उपयोग करते हैं सर द गवर्नमेंट इज फुली अवेयर दैट अ मैकेनिज्म हैज टू बी डेवलप व्हिच इज कंटीन्यूअस व्हिच इज रेगुलेटरी व्हिच मॉनिटर्स एंड आल्सो फाइंड्स वेज एंड मींस टू कर्ब अडल्ट्रेशन जो नए नए तरीके में मार्केट में इंप्लीमेंट हो रही है मैं तीनों माननीय सदस्यों की चिंता को अपने साथ समावेश करती हूं और सर आपके माध्यम से इस सदन को यह विश्वास दिलाना चाहती हूं कि हमारी सरकार इसे सीरियसली मीट आउट करेगी क्योंकि क्योंकि हाल ही में हमारी सरकार ने एक टास्क फोर्स गठित की जो 45 सिर्फ 45 दिन में अपनी रिपोर्ट हाजिर करेगी और उन सजेशंस को हम पब्लिक डोमेन में डालेंगे ताकि हमें जनता का इनपुट भी प्राप्त हो सके जब सरकार ने इसकी तरफ दृढ़ कदम उठाया है तो कुछ समझ के ही उठाया होगा ऐसे ही नहीं जैसे हवा में तीर चलाने की बात हो आदरणीय महोदय धन्यवाद Honorable Minister for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare to introduce the bill. Speaker sir, I beg to move for leave to introduce a bill further to introduce agriculture curriculum in national education policy 2022. Now the question is that leave be granted to introduce a bill further to introduce national agriculture curriculum in national education policy 2022. Those who are in favor will please say aye. those who are against will please say no i think the eyes have it the eyes have it the eyes have it leave is granted sir i introduce the bill now the house will take up the consideration of the right to work act 2022 honorable minister for labor and employment please sir i beg to move the bill for guaranteed employment and payment for work in accordance with its quantity and quality or the right to work act 2022 the main clauses of this bill are ensuring secure livelihood to everyone the program mainly focuses on youngsters between the age group of 18 to 35 among whom there is a higher rate of unemployment today even after being skilled and educated they will be provided with jobs according to their skills and capabilities the people of rural areas especially the tribal categories who are socially and economically backward are given special privileges and are provided with employment for the betterment of their lifestyle and to create stability to their family two adjusting the school curriculum accordingly for providing vocational training vocational training is under consideration to be started from the school itself skills and trainings are imparted to the most basic level of population especially to those living below the poverty line along with that after their school level training and education they will be provided with course as for higher studies which will help them in developing the skills which they have previously learned and also identify and improving inherent entrepreneurial skills quality education will certainly create skilled and well informed youth 
would be better employable and can create business opportunities for others in both public and private sectors. After their training and skill development, the government will help those people who wish to begin a new startup by providing financial and technical assistance, making this policy a part of government's making in their scheme. The third provision is the benefits of overall development. Apart from providing economic security, it can help in protecting the environment, empowering women, reducing the rural urban migration, and fostering social equity among others. So, the fourth provision is the raising of funds. The fund for this program will be raised by both central and state governments. 75% of the fund will be raised by the central government and the rest 25% will be raised and bring by the state. An employment says of 1.5% will be added in all union taxes. 0.3% of the next budget will be allotted for this scheme and also 1% of the budget allotted to defense will be diverted for this. Sir, I am confident that every member of this house, irrespective of party affiliation, will wholeheartedly welcome this bill. And through it, we can all be a part of providing a better future to our youth and the development of our country. Yes, sir. sir, with these words, now I move that the Right to Work Bill 2022 be taken into consideration. Sriman Adarsh, what are your remarks on this bill? Sir Speaker, the Bill of Right to Work will contribute to the quality development of our country. Rise in employment opportunities will definitely be possible once the bill is passed. Those who have employment opportunities as befitting to their qualification and skills will have their own value in the society. Employment provides financial freedom and decision-making power. Apart from rising employment opportunities and increase in standard of living for the citizens of India, the situation of brain drain can be immensely reduced. Yeah. All of us are aware that India is losing the best of its brain to other countries due to lack of employment opportunities. Once the employment prospects look up, brain drain will get automatically reduced. The cream of India will serve for their own country in a better way, thereby contributing to the development of their motherland. Sir, let me point out that increase in employment opportunities will directly result in reduction in crime rate, creates a better living standards, thereby contributing to the development of our country. Thus, thus I strongly support the bill and request my fellow members to take this bill into consideration and make the right to work a fundamental right. Sriman Bhagat, what is your opinion on this bill? Sir Speaker, the introduced bill for consideration raises many queries for which the government is answerable. As we are aware, our country lacks funds for a project as big as this. Look before you leave, this is what I want to remind the government. We think the government is over ambitious about this project without, without taking into account the actual scenario. This project claims equal opportunities for all gender, class, and creed, right? Imagine, you are speaking to the majority of women who are still in the shackles of social taboos and tradition. What about them? What about the transgenders? And where do they stand? Sir, we will not remain silent as our citizens are given false promises and guarantees without an actual plan. We are not against providing employment opportunities, but how will the government manage with the training and distribution of the skilled citizens and allotting them appropriate jobs according to their ability? How long will it take for the government in implementing the action plan? What assurance can the government give on job security for the youth? The scalability of this will differ from state to state depending upon the population density and other criteria. So what would be the role of state government in implementing this plan? We are not fools to fall into the deceptive promises of the government. We will raise questions and hold the government answerable. Opposition leader, Ms. Archana Patel, please enlighten the house with your views. Speaker Mahode, I want to think about the bill. I want to think about the bill. 
जैसे कि श्रम मंत्री ने सिर्फ सिर्फ दावा किया है कि भारत की पूरी युवाओं के लिए रोजगार के अवसर पर ध्यान केंद्रित किया गया है लेकिन 18 से 35 वर्ष की आयु के युवाओं की संख्या बहुत ज़्यादा है और मेरी सवाल यह है कि इतनी बड़ी संख्या के लिए सरकार रोजगार कैसे सुरक्षित कर सकते हैं सरकार को ऐसे वादे और गारंटी देना बंद कर देना चाहिए जिन्हें वो पूरे ना कर सके दर इनबिलिटी एंड इनकेपेबिलिटी इज बींग शोन थ्रू एवरी इनकम्प्लीट प्रोजेक्ट दे हैव एवर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इट इज हाई टाइम दैट द गवर्नमेंट शुड रियलाइज दर इनफिशियंसी बींग द रूलिंग पार्टी सर आज की स्थिति में ज्यादा से ज्यादा वर्क फोर्स प्राइवेट सेक्टर में ही तैनात है उनको कोई जॉब सिक्योरिटी नहीं मिल रही है आज की लेबर मार्केट में जो इनफॉर्मलाइजेशन चल रहा है वो दरअसल एक चिंताजनक मुद्दा है सर दिस बिल इफ इंट्रोड्यूस कु डिनाई द फ्रीडम ऑफ चॉइस ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड कुड ऑल्सो रेस्ट्रिक्ट प्रॉपर यूसेज ऑफ द स्किल्स ऑफ द पर्सन इन सब को ध्यान में रखते हुए ये बिल पास नहीं होना चाहिए मैं ये दावा करती हूँ कि ये बिल विफल होने वाली एक और परियोजना है Honorable Prime Minister, please. Speaker, sir, I strongly support the moving of the bill as it would be a major landmark in the development of our country. Yes, yes, yes. It is the youth aged between 18 to 35 who face the brunt of the lack of employment opportunities. I vehemently oppose the opposition's contention that we are moving headlong into the bill without giving it adequate consideration. Where there is a will, there is a way. कहा जाता है ढूंढने से तो भगवान भी मिल जाते हैं पॉजिटिव ऑफ फंड्स इज नॉट एन इश्यू एट ऑल कंसीडरिंग द फैक्ट दैट वी कैन रेस सफिशिएंट फंड्स थ्रू सेस एज फार एज वेस्टिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन वुमेन आर कंसीडर्ड वी आर शॉक्ड टू सी द ऑपोजिशन टेकिंग सच ओल्ड फैशनड एंड जेंडर बायस व्यूज आई सीरियसली वंडर व्हेदर वी आर इन द 21st सेंचुरी और इन द 18th सेंचुरी I think we have come a long way whereas the opposition are still stuck in the primitive times. If at all women are reluctant to come forward due to their social or personal reasons, I think this is the most appropriate way of educating and liberating them. Speaker sir, I would like to emphasize that our government is very much committed to providing equal employment opportunities to men, women and transgenders without any bias. so i would like to conclude by reminding everyone in this house that there is a reason why our government is seated on this side while the opposition is seated on that side of the parliamentary house honorable minister for labor and employment please sir i would like to remind the house that the rules and regulations outlined in the labor laws and welfare scheme are being executed well and i can guarantee you that the same benefits would be extended to the additional workforce created by the implementation of this bill the areas of concern raised by the honorable members of opposition have already been thought of and attended to i am sure that the increase in demand in labor market will be addressed by the opportunities created in the ict tourism hotel management health and education sectors where india's potential has not been tapped to the fullest sir i beg to state that this is a revolutionary leap for india and i'm sure that with proper implementation india will become an employment hub for global citizens now the question is that the bill right to work act 2022 be taken into consideration those who are in favor will please say aye those who are against will please say no i think the eyes have it the eyes have it the eyes have it the motion is adopted now the question is clause 2 to 6 stands part of the bill but there is an amendment in clause 5 by shriman bhagat sir are you moving it no sir in view of the reply given by the honorable prime minister and the minister for labor and employment i am not pressing my amendment Now the question is that the clause two to six stands part of the bill. Those who are in favour will please say aye. Aye. Those who are against will please say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. 
class 2 to 6 stands part of the bill. Now the question is, class 1, the enacting formula and the title of the bill stands part of the bill. Those who are in favor will please say aye. aye. Those who are against will please say no. I think the ayes have it, the ayes have it, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Honorable Minister for Labor and Employment, please. Sir, I move the bill be passed. Motion moved that the bill be passed. Those who are in favor will please say aye. aye. Those who are against will please say no. I think the ayes have it, the ayes have it, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted, the bill is passed. The House is adjourned to meet again tomorrow at 11 a.m.